Angel fans, the Halos made some moves. Not the moves that we were expecting, but they were moves nonetheless. And so John and I are going to talk about each of these moves and ask a couple of questions like, who are these guys and how can they impact the Angels in 2024? It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On every day. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube. Leave a comment for us. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Thanks for being here with us for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, we hope you had a great holiday weekend with your friends and family or whoever you call family. We we hope that you had a great one. Uh, Mike, best gift that you got. Best gift? Best oh, gift. man. I got you don't some- have to say mine. I, okay, well then I won't. Uh, the, the best gift was from my oldest daughter. I got some. I got some shoes, some Nike oh, shoes, shoes. Ah, oh, white shoes. shoes. I'm moving into that, you know, Florida retired look. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I love it. Hey, uh, just a couple of quick show notes. First off, uh, we're dropping uh, today's episode. Obviously, today on Wednesday, we'll be here Thursday and Friday this week, and then we'll do the same thing next week because of New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, the holiday. We'll have episodes for you Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week as well following that we'll be doing episodes monday wednesday friday until right up uh before spring training and pitchers and catchers report that sort of thing and another big show note here mike is that locked on angels has been nominated for best baseball podcast from the sports podcast awards for 2024 you can help us out uh, and help out the super halo bros by voting for us as the best baseball podcast we'd love to have your vote And it would mean a lot to us if you did that. The link is in the episode description. So just click that and you can vote for Locked on Angels. Hey, on today's show, the Angels added some players, Mike. Who are they and why should we care? Well, there's there's some good reasons to care here. Yeah. So we're actually going to start with the signing of a former Astro. What in the world? (laughs) It's uh, Jake Marisnik, Johnny. All Jake, no break is like what we call him on the show. Watch Uh, out. He he signed a minor league deal and will be in camp as a non-roster invite in spring training. Uh, Marisnik is going to be 33 in March and has been a positive war player every single year since 2014 due to his defensive abilities in the Mm -hmm. outfield his offense johnny has not been very good he's been consistently below average here's his slash line 237 batting average 280 on base and a 408 slugging Uh, those numbers roughly align that was last year they roughly align with his career numbers 228 batting average 281 on base and a 385 Uh, slugging percentage, and that's in over 2,000 plate appearances, nearly uh, 2,300 plate appearances. He he looks to be a potential solid fourth outfield type for the Halos. He's logged more than 400 innings in both outfield corners in his career, and he's racked up at nearly 4,500 innings in center field, posting a plus defensive grade at every spot. Johnny, Mm. he's credited with an 80 defensive run saved Mm -hmm. and 53 outs above average across the entire outfield. That's including, John, 54 defensive run saves and 40 outs above average just in center field. So this guy is good defensively. Great arm strength. He clocked in at the 86th percentile. And since his debut in 2013, he ranks 8th among MLB outfielders in defensive run saves and 12th in outs above average. And he's generally been a part-time player Hmm. wherever he's been. Yeah. He, uh, last season, he was across three teams, the White Sox, the Tigers, and the Dodgers. He appeared in 46 games between the three of them often used as a defensive replacement or pinch runner on the bases. uh, He's still ranked in sprint speed as the 87th percentile of MLB players according to StatCast. You know I love my StatCast. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> but he's best known to Angel fans as the jerk, the jerk store, <laughs> who took out Jonathan Lucroy at home plate yeah. in 2019. Marisnik ended up being suspended two games for that collision. It wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, as touch and go as they would have you believe it was right. uh, it was it was a pretty brutal knock right and I'll so, take no break man that guy came barreling in and seriously Jonathan Lucroy was right there to greet him and then I think that's when the rules changed they saw that happen and they saw a few other things happen and went you know what maybe that's not so great for the game of baseball right you're telling me you're telling me Jonathan <laughs> Lucroy is the Tom Brady of baseball they changed the rules for him just, <laughs> just for him just for I him? doubt it I doubt <laughs> it but he was a part of the conversation right <laughs> right right Mike how do you think the Halos are going to use Marisnik this season I know it's a minor league deal yeah let me just say first this is the kind of deal that the Angels should be making when it comes to players like this I know that they've signed some major league deals for guys like Adam Simber and whatnot and we've all kind of went, mm, yeah, like because right. then you don't have the flexibility to move guys between AAA and the majors. This is the exact right kind of thing that you should be doing: signing a guy to a minor league deal with a spring training invite to get some guys to have some AAA depth. Yeah, and and so that's finally is what I have to say. Finally, huh. they make a move like this instead of giving, uh, you know, hey, how about a million dollars? and a major league deal. Like, no, right. we're not doing that. We need right. guys on minor league deals. So yeah. that's that's what I'm glad to see. But uh, what do you think about Marizic and how the Halos are going to use him here? Depth, man. I think, honestly, that's all the Angels have been thinking about the last couple of years is to have some depth at every position. And with Taylor Ward questionable, we're not really sure where he's going to be once spring training starts. Mm -hmm. I think that this could be a potential left fielder for the Angels. Not necessarily going to be in, in, the, in the starting rotation or starting lineup all of the time, but he certainly can be somebody that could come in, fill in his hitting numbers, as I mentioned, aren't fantastic, but defensively he's real good. And if the mm -hmm. angels can hit around him and Mike Trout can stay healthy, a lot of ifs I know, but they're not going to necessarily need to utilize Marisnik and his offense. He's going to have much, but his defense is going to be fantastic for this team. Fourth outfielder, I think sounds about right. Unless the angels want to do something creative with the outfield with Ward and Trout and Moniac, and then maybe have Adele rotate in and out of there mm -hmm. as well. I just hope that this doesn't eliminate Joe Adele. I hope that this isn't one of those no. situations where he's on the he's on the verge. You don't think so? You don't think no. that's going to happen? This is this is what Brett Phillips should have been last year, Mike, the fourth okay. outfield guy who got a minor league deal who comes up when one of your outfielders gets hurt, right? Yeah. Because yeah, you, you think about this. This is one of those situations where if Marisnik is up with the team, you're like, oh no. Because that yeah. means that your your backup infielder and and whoever else has been injured, and so that's why you see guys like Marisnik coming up. Now again, the the defense is huge, and mm -hmm. at least he has that going for him. Um, but it, it's not a Monte Harrison or, or a Magnery Sierra where this yeah. guy yeah. is like at least you know capable of sure. putting up sure. uh, uh, maybe a, an OPS of one hundred, which is league average, like. At least he'll be around that, maybe like a 90 or a 95. But at the end of the day, this is the kind of move that you don't want to to uh, you, basically you don't want to see this guy in the majors. Something sure. something there was an injury. There's a guy on an IL for a week or Emergency, whatever. Maybe. Right? Yeah. And that Marisnik yeah. is going to come up. And I say this should have been Brett Phillips last year because Brett Phillips shouldn't have gotten a major league deal. Right. And that's why we were in the conundrum we were in at the beginning right. of last season where we're like, well, what about Mickey Moniak? Should he be the fourth outfielder? He's having a great spring. And, you know, as much as we wanted to see him on the team, it was like, they're not going to put Moniak on the major league roster yet. Yeah. Because yeah. Phillips has a major league deal for a million dollars. And and they can't put him, they can't assign him to a minor league deal. Yeah. Or to the minors, I should say. And, and, and so this is the exact right way that the Angels should have gone about this. So So this feels good to you simply because it sounds like under your interpretation of this signing is that it's going to be a Moniac, uh, Ward, Adele, Trout rotation yes. in that outfield. And that's, I think, the best way to move forward because each of those guys, they need a shot. And specifically, yeah. I think Mickey Moniac needs to be in there as often as possible, probably an everyday type of guy. I know his yeah. strikeout rate was really high. And I think that he showed if you give him consistent at bats, the dude's going to get really hot and really carry a team. And he's going to figure out that strikeout stuff. The guy mm -hmm. hasn't really had much playing time in the majors. And so as teams were figuring him, him out, he was figuring some things out, hit a home run left-handed. And so I I'm with you. I like this move. I like this guy in the minor leagues. If he's up in the major leagues, 
man, that's going to be hard because the reality means that we're in a situation where there's injuries or there's an emergency. And that seems to be the angels narrative the last few years. So I hope that he, you know, good luck to him, but I hope that he stays in the minor leagues. Right. Yeah. And, and that if we do need him to come up at any point, he's not starting regularly. He's filling in, in the outfield, say Mike Trout gets a day off and he plays center field. I again, love his, defensive numbers because he's going to come in and we're not going to lose anything defensively. Mm -hmm. And he's got playoff experience and he's been on some really big teams. So I think that he brings some veteran leadership, even if he is in triple a to be able to communicate what it's like to be successful in the major leagues and be on a good team. And one thing to consider here too, like you mentioned, Taylor Ward coming back from the face fracture and he's got to get some reps in. Hopefully he's doing that over the off season feels good enough to do that. Mike, if something goes wrong, with Joe Adele or Mickey Moniak and they need some time down in the minors so that they can get in and, wow. and get some good swings in and whatnot. Uh, wow. Then that's when you're going to see a Marisnik. So it's, it's not a bad body to have. And, and every team is making these signings right now. Nothing yeah, the, for the, sure. The dam is still plugged up. Like yep. there's nothing happening right now. And, and my guess is nothing is going to happen until after New Year's. Well, and I, I did a little perusing on YouTube uh, just before the show and was looking at some of the other Locked On channels, Locked On Baseball channels, and there is at least one or two episodes from the last week or two that says, why is the team waiting so long? And so mm-hmm. everybody's feeling the way that we're, we're all feeling. There. Everybody's yeah. waiting. And you know, I think it had to be Otani, and then it had to be Yamamoto, and then probably after the first of the year, we'll start to see some of those chips fall and see people go where they need to go. But there's been a lot of minor league signings, a yeah. lot of we're going to bring them into spring training training, but there's not been any huge contracts that have been handed out outside of like the Royals who have probably built their team and they're done outside of the Royals. There really hasn't been anybody and the Dodgers haven't been anybody that has done anything significant up until this point. Remind me to mention the Royals uh, during segment two here, because I have a thought that I really think that angel fans should hear. Hey, we're just getting started here on lockdown angels. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day coming up. The angel signed some pitchers all with some great potential all you know, minor league types that could come up and help fill out the bullpen when there's a need. But will any of them turn into something worthwhile or more? We'll share their names and their stats. Decide if there's a reason to get excited about them or just be happy that you're, they're here in terms of bullpen depth. We'll talk about all of that coming right up. John, we're in that, uh, it's that dead week, that week between Christmas Mm -hmm. and and New Year's. The saddest week of the year. (laughs) Actually, I love this week because there's absolutely nothing to do and I've I've needed to take a break and our family needed to take a break. And so it's a good good week to get healthy, a good week to get holy, a good week to, to rest and relax. It's also a good week that because we're not doing anything or a lot of us aren't doing anything, it's a good week to check out FanDuel, right? America's number one sports book with all of the college football out there right now and all of the NFL football out there right now, you can actually go to FanDuel and perhaps win some money. And you probably need money after the Christmas holiday. You probably <laughs> spent a lot of money, right? John spent millions of dollars on me and I'm so grateful That's for right. that. And right now, new customers like you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks. If your team wins, so whoever your team is, you can bet on them. And if they're a good team, you can bet that they're probably going to win. And if you put $5 on the money line, you can win $150 in bonus bets. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, right now is the best time. The app's really easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options like spreads, player props, over-unders, and a whole lot more. And they'll explain everything on the app. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, and you can get involved this NFL season in a really intentional way. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Hey, everydayers, Locked On Podcast Network has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. So if you're craving sports talk, I know baseball is a little bit slow right now. I know you're here as an Angel fan to talk about what the Halos have done in terms of their depth pieces and signings. But if you want more sports talk, Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, 365, covering the top stories of sports of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and hit subscribe and be part of the first ever 24-7 sports streaming channel. 
The Angels signed Jake Marisnik in the outfield. They also signed a first baseman and a couple of catchers, and one of those catchers was very familiar. Let's start with that first baseman, Johnny. His name is Alfonso Rivas, and he was claimed off of waivers from the Guardians. Mm -hmm. Cleveland designated him for assignment just a couple of weeks ago, about a week ago, and he filled out the Angels' 40-man roster. He's 27, lost his roster spot when the Guardians signed Austin Hedges. He'd only been claimed by the organization for about a month, and then was let go. They claimed him around early November, and then they let him go, which is kind of a routine in the offseason. Hey, here's a guy. Mm -hmm. Let's pick him up, and then we need to sign this guy, and let's fill the roster spot. John, talk a bit about Revis and his history in Major League Baseball. Yeah, each of the past three seasons, he split time between the Cubs, the Padres, and the Pirates, and he's got a good sample size of 49 plate appearances where he hit well, but again, it's a small sample size, yeah. so it's hard to take that uh, and, and any larger than a grain of salt, right, Micah? But that was 2021 and in his debut with the Cubs. But he's got a 233 batting average, 316 on base, and a 342 slugging slash line in 410 trips over the previous two seasons, which is not great. So, again, that small sample size wasn't really reflective of what he ended up doing the next two seasons. He does have a minor league option remaining, and he's got a good track record uh, at the top level of the minors. He's had a career 313 batting average, 424 on base, and a 492 slugging percentage in parts of four AAA seasons. And he's drawn a walk in a 15.1% uh, in all of his plate appearances. So really good walk rate. As well, he's more of a gap hitter than a true power bat. Uh, he's got 40 doubles and 15 long balls and 637 career plate appearances in AAA. Interestingly, Mike, he's got a similar profile to mm -hmm. somebody like Nolan Shanowell, right? Yeah, they are both lefty swinging first basemen. They've got excellent plate discipline. You mentioned the 15.1% walk rate. Uh, Shanowell has uh, a really great hit tool. He has a really tiny 14.4 strikeout rate and 132 major league baseball appearances. Remember this guy was just playing college ball just a few months before he yeah. came up. So the big question, Johnny is how they're going to use Rivas because he's got a minor league option. He's a fallback guy, a sensible fallback option. If the angels miss out on maybe if they want to upgrade at first base, I don't necessarily think they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. or maybe upgraded designated here, probably lean in that direction. Maybe somebody that can rotate in the outfield as well. But the really big thing would be he'd be a fallback guy if Sean Owell struggles. There's no indication that Nolan's going to struggle mm -hmm. at all and, and that he's going to continue to do what he does, 29 straight games of reaching base. And so now he's going to get a full season, also full spring training. So that'll be great. He could be a lefty bat off of the bench for the Halos. Um, that is if they prefer Rivas over Trey Cabbage, who mm -hmm. has been up and down, but really hasn't performed well in the majors since they called him up. Minor leagues, he's a stud, but he hasn't yeah. really done well in the majors. I think that they might lean in the direction of Rivas just simply because he can draw walks and Trey Cabbage wasn't able to do that. Struck out a lot and struck out in some big moments when he was playing for the big club. I think between Drury and Sean Owell, and then having infield options like Renhifo and Neto and, and just kind of the, the and I even say Thais too over yeah. at first base. Yeah. I think you're going to see more of that. And I think Rivas will be, again, kind of the depth piece that the yep. Angels need in order to fulfill a role that's been hit with injury, right? So if Sean Owell does go down, you might see Rivas come up and get some ABs. And the other thing, Mike, is, you know, we're, we're all rooting for Nolan Sean Owell, but again, yeah. It was 29 games and got on base all 29 games uh, in each of those. And we're hoping he continues that streak into next season. But you never know with a young guy. Right. I mean, he, hopefully, he, I'm sure he's making some adjustments and working yeah. on things so he can stay consistent coming this year. And I'm excited to watch him. But again, you have to have the expectation of, well, eventually this guy might get figured out or sure. they might find a hole in his swing or they might sure. find something that they can take advantage of. And, and he's got to be able to readjust to that. So while I believe, and, and I'm with you on Nolan Shonowell being there at first base when the season starts, you never know. Something yeah, could happen, right. and, and you never know you know, if, they, or if they're going to need to move him down to get some reps in AA or AAA right. to, to keep him fresh. Uh, the Angels right. also signed uh, Francisco Mejia, who is a catcher to a minor league deal again. 
Steele comes with a spring training invite. Mm -hmm. The exact kind of moves the Angels should be making when it comes to depth. Stop giving out major league contracts, guys. (laughs) Um, He's 28 years old. He played in the big leagues with the Rays each of the last three seasons. He was once a top 30 prospect across multiple uh, uh, judge, judge, judges, judges, judges of, <laughs> of, uh, of, you know, top prospects. And, right. and so there was more than one person and one group out there saying that he was a top 30 prospect. He held down a 90 OPS plus, which means he was 10% lower than league average in since 2019, but he does have a positive baseball reference war each of the last three seasons, mostly because his defense is based mm-hmm. on an average arm to keep the running game in, in check. And, make sure that guys aren't stealing bags on his team. So that's an interesting move as well. Yeah. Name that you really recognize is Chad Wallach. He re-signed with the Angels, minor league deal. And again, these are the signings that the Angels need to make. But specifically with these catchers, John, this is a definite need for the Halos when it comes to their depth. Anthony Mulrine would have been the third catcher without these two guys signing. And he's a solid defender, but he has an OPS of 556 in 587 plate appearances in double A AA and triple A. So he's not hitting. And then there's two other guys, Tyler Payne and Zach Humphreys, that are options. But if I said their names, would you know who they are? No. Probably not, right? <laughs> like, and fans probably wouldn't either. Here's here's the question that I had as I looked at these signings. Does this <laughs> does this make that Edgar Caro trade even more painful now? Because he would probably be that third, maybe even second catcher on this roster if they kept him, right? It, you know, to me, it's it's painful because Caro could have been worth a lot more in terms of trade value right now. But yeah. I will say, Mike, I know that you want catching depth like this because we fell all the way to uh, Chris Oakey yeah. <laughs> last year because yeah. we didn't have Ohapi. We had Wallach, uh, but he got hurt as well. And Thice was consistent all year long in terms of playing time. We didn't have Stassi, so it fell to Chris Oakey. So you want your top four guys to be dudes who have been there before. Right. Having said that, is there a realm of possibility that Matt Thice gets traded Mm. uh, because he is somebody with a few years left? He's out of options. Yeah. But he feels like if, I mean, who, I mean, we just saw Maldonado come off the board. He's going back to the White Sox. Right. And if you want a, a catcher with major league experience, a lefty power bat, I mean, he's got to fix that hole in his swing. And I think, that Johnny Washington and the crew can help Thice sure. uh, fix that hole in his swing. Cause you know, he's got that big loopy Cody Bellinger swing. He does. Mike is, is Thice an option for a team out there? And maybe we could get a nice little return for him. I think that he would be an interesting trade piece. In fact, we're going to talk a bit more about that on tomorrow's show that, that there's a lot of people that have been interested in Thice. Now, before we move on, Johnny, you mentioned, for me to remind you about the Royals in this segment. So was there a thought that you had when it came to the Kansas city Royals? Mike, I know that it's frustrating for the angels to not make any moves that are of significance just yet. Yeah. Um, Where even if it was like a starting pitcher, who's like a three or four guy, because we all know that we need more starting pitching, but the, the, the angels were the first ones out of the gate last year in getting Tyler Anderson. Mm -hmm. And if you look around this off season, and you cover your eyes and you point and you point and you, and in any direction, you're going to land on a Michael Waka or a Seth Lugo type. Yeah. The exact type of pitcher that Tyler Anderson was the last off season. Yeah. And so I feel like if the angels were going to make their moves and get guys like Waka and Lugo, they would have already done it just like the Royals did. Hmm. However, my hope is, and this is your hopium, your holiday hopium for the day, friends, <laughs> that they're aiming higher. And we've seen that they're aiming higher in terms of wanting Blake Snell. Now Snell has his own pros and cons. Of course, we've talked about that before on the show, but I will say that if the angels were just going to get the Tyler Anderson types and be done with it, they would have already done it. Yeah. They would have already signed Lugo. They would have already signed Waka. And so my hope is they're out there in the trade market, trying to make something happen. They're out there in the free agency market, trying to make something happen because if we were just going to get our, our Tyler Anderson of 2024, I think the angels would have already done that. Speaking of pitchers, Johnny, the angels picked up pitchers and maybe you've heard of them or maybe you not belly itchers, not, (laughs) 
<laughs> that was good. Uh, you got me. Uh, they, they picked up two specific pitchers. One is left-handed pitcher DJ Snelton, who was a minor league guy, and he signed a minor league deal. Let's he pitched, go. He pitched with the Yankees in AAA last year. There is some video of him hitting 100 to 102 miles an hour, but he hasn't played much in the majors. His last major league outing was in 2018 with the Giants, Johnny. Mm-hmm. And so that was a while ago. Again, it's a depth piece, left-handed pitcher, somebody that can come out of the bullpen. And so it's one of those, I think, just in case of an emergency type of pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he he's somebody that's intriguing. And then the other guy that's intriguing is pitcher Alan Renhell, who has signed a minor league deal. He's a right-handed starting pitcher. John, mm. He's intriguing to me because he spent the last eight years with the Braves hmm. and he was in AAA the last two seasons. And what's really intriguing about him, he's 26 and he still wow. has some years ahead of him, but he also has some years in baseball and he's going to be reunited with Ron Washington and that organization, that leadership. And maybe Ron can help maybe figure some things out with Barry yeah. Enright. He's had some moderate success in AAA, but nothing that really catches your eye. And again, I think that what was incentive what incentivized the the pickup is that he's 26 and so he could be a swing man he could be a long reliever uh maybe even a a sixth starter if they need an emergency starter something along those lines but i'm intrigued by him because i think we might actually see him at different points this season yeah i mean you always take a a gamble for a guy like dj snelton who's hitting 100 to 102 at times yeah uh, and especially on a minor league deal, Mike, with Alan Ranhell and DJ Snelton signing minor league deals, because now you have the ability to be flexible. This was the issue with the Angels last year. Yeah. You couldn't move Jaime Berea no. down to AAA because he was out of options and bring up a fresh arm. So every time Jaime Berea either started or pitched four to five innings as a long reliever, or whatever it was, you couldn't send him down to replace his arm with a minor league uh, uh, bullpen guy. Right. And and that was the issue. So having these guys on minor league deals gives them a ton of roster flexibility that they didn't seem to have last year. So I'm I'm excited for the way that they're signing these minor league deals and these bullpen pieces. Again, this, this is like tying your shoes in the morning, everybody. You have to make these moves in order to get through a 162 game season. So again, none, none of these are lighting up the the charts in terms of oh, right. top top free agents or anything right. like that. This is just making sure you have your baseline. So when the guys you are excited about, like Ben Joyce or what have you, need a day off, you hmm. have these guys to come up and help you out. Interesting that you bring up Ben Joyce because the final signing is Tyron Guerrero, who is a 32 year old guy who signed a Guerrero, a Guerrero, no relation, by the way, to the Guerreros that we know and love Johnny 37% of his pitches were fastballs last year. And he threw at 99 plus there you go. And had a handful of guys that he punched out and he hit 104 when he punched them out. So interesting that you mentioned Ben Joyce, because that's this guy. Here's, here's also the issue. This guy walks a ton of batters has a lack of control. And in fact, he signed a minor league deal with the reds last season, but was released in June because he had an 1151 ERA in 22 and two thirds innings. (laughs) Oh, good times. Yeah. And he walked 13.6% of the batters that he faced and then in with the Reds, he walked 18.8 in AAA mm. of the batters that he faced. So he, yeah, he's really struggled. Now he's went to the, the Mexico leagues and, and has pitched there and has really worked on his walk issues and has a, what scouts are saying, a reasonable walk rate. There wasn't mm. a stat available to find out, but scouts were saying, hey, he's worked on some things. But Johnny, is is this another no risk, maybe high reward type of pitcher that maybe you could bring up in a pinch in an emergency, or maybe they can figure something out with him. And then suddenly we have another really hard thrower in the bullpen. I am interested to know that first of all, yes, I think that this is a a high risk, a good reward, not a high reward, but a good reward. Like you might get some good innings out of this guy, but I'm interested to see with, with Dom Chidi, taking the reins as the pitching coordinator for the minors again and not buddy Carlisle. 
uh, Dom Chidi seems like the old school guy who is going to say, hey, get in the zone. And he's not going to yeah. worry about analytics or pitch shape or anything yeah. like that, which I think has been the issue for the Angels the last couple of years. And so I think if, if, if perhaps these guys come in and they need somebody to just tell them, you need to pound the zone. You look at the glove right in the middle of the zone and you aim for it. And mm. wherever the pitch goes is where the pitch goes. But you need to aim for the middle. Like Tyler Glass now was saying with the Rays. Like he yeah. said that that was such an intriguing part of how they get their pitchers to do so well. So I am interested to see how these guys work on their particular issues. And again, location, Mike, and and throwing the ball outside the zone, that's been a struggle for the hard-throwing guys the Angels have picked up. Right. But again, no harm, no foul on these depth moves. I know they're not exciting. I know they're not going to light the world on fire with, with their names or anything like that. But like I said a minute ago, these are the names you have to have in order to make it through all 162. Let's let's put that on a shirt. Make it through all 162. <laughs> I love it. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Remember, every day is Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today, and they are there for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. You can go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. In fact, make it your second listen after this show and subscribe to the first First ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow at Lockdown Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, jump into the comments below the video. Don't forget to hit that link in the description. Give us your vote for the Sports Podcast Awards 2024 Best Baseball Podcast. That would mean so much to us and just a small way to, uh, to give back to the Halo Bros. And uh, it takes little to no effort at all to, to vote. So we would really appreciate that. Mike, what do you have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, you mentioned Thice and possibly getting traded. John, there has been some other names that have come up. And I know that some of those like cynical Angel fans are like, well, we got nothing to trade. Nothing. Nobody good, right? But not according to the rumors. The That's rumors true. are that there's a lot of people that are reaching out to talk about four particular, maybe even five particular players on the Angels. So we'll name them all, and we'll talk about what they could bring back tomorrow on Locked On Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. We hope you'll come back and join us tomorrow for that. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow for more Locked On Angels. I'm going to go eat some more Christmas coffee cake now. Hey, I'm going to get those uh, cookies Mom made. Those were good. Those were good, too.